So now I'm going to hit them with the Ultron. Oh, they retreat. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm back with another video for you today, and I have an awesome deck once again. This is a deck that's been done before in many ways. It is an Ultron Zoo a surprise value deck with Invisible Woman, Patriot, Kazar, Blue Marvel. You're going to play a lot of one-cost cards early in the game. You're then going to play some big ongoing cards that will help to buff them up. You're going to protect them with Invisible Woman, protect the one cost with armor, and then you're going to slam the Ultron on the final turn to overwhelm the opponent with those very high power drones benefiting from the Patriot Kazar Blue Marvel buff. This deck is very nice for consistently gaining cubes. It's difficult for the opponent to know what is going on with that Invisible Woman. But anyway, let's just run through the card choices real quick here, and we can jump into some gameplay. So the first card we have is Ant-Man. This is a great one-cost card. It's just consistent, reliable four points of value when you are playing with Ultron that can easily fill up the locations for you. Next, we have Sunspot. For those situations where we sometimes miss our two or three-cost card, perhaps, and just want to get a bit of extra cheeky power on the board and potentially uh, dissuade the opponent from playing into that location as we can always get extra strength there. We've got Iceman as well. This is good early game, of course, disrupting the opponent. Same situation with the Korg, both very good at putting a bit of a wrench in the cog. Uh, is, that, is that a saying? I don't know. It might be, but if it is, we're putting a wrench in the cog of the opponent's machine uh, that is their deck. Next, we have Zero. This card is a little awkward sometimes, uh, as you'll see later in the gameplay here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, try not to disable your own units. Be careful with zero and invisible woman, because if you zero on the final turn, whatever. You you'll figure out how that works yourself, I'm sure. We can use zero on Ebony more, though, but a very nice turn two play, which will accelerate the amount of power we have on the board and really cheat out a bunch of strength onto the board. Uh, we can also, of course, just play that Ebony more <clears throat> into a location perhaps on turn three, or we can use it with the Invisible Woman to nu completely nullify that negative Ebony more effect. So some very nice synergy there. And uh, yeah, the Invisible Woman is just going to be a key card here to add a lot of surprise factor to the deck. The opponents are not going to know what's coming their way a lot of the time. You can play Invisible Woman and all of your other great cards behind it to keep that, that secret uh, value hidden. Next, we've got Armor. Of course, this is good for protecting all those one costs from Killmonger and that kind of thing. Of course, you can also throw them behind Invisible Woman to protect them, so that's pretty nice. We've got Patriot in there. He's only really good with the Ultron, so some games he won't be super good and you might just find yourself having to retreat if you don't draw the Ultron for turn six, if you've played that Patriot already. Uh, but I generally like playing it out on curve and just seeing if you get Ultron. If you do, you have the nuts, you have the gr the best hand, really, the best sort of plays possible, and you could go crazy. Next, we have Kazar. This is just going to buff all those one costs, including the Ultron drones. Really nice. Blue Marvel, of course, a similar story, buffs everything on the board. We can throw both of those guys behind Invisible Women. The deck is just so effortless to play a lot of the time. You just play your cards on curve, put them all behind Invisible Women, play that big Ultron turn six, flood the board with drones, take over the game, and have a very satisfying, consistent cube game. So that's the deck. It's, it's a pretty straightforward one. It's a, an archetype that's been done before, but I wanted to bring my version of it to the table and of course bring you guys some gameplay for your entertainment. With that being said, let's jump into the games. Okay, we're going to be up against Only. I know Only has played a lot of <clears throat> Thanos in the past. Let's check if they are Thanos. They're not. I'll start with a Korg here. Get the rock in their deck, hopefully. Might want to protect these one cost cards with the armor. We've got Iceman that I want to play as well. So perhaps something like Iceman Sunspot here is good. I don't love the sewer system for us. It's not too amazing. Let's get the Sunspot on board. That'll help if we're not using all of our mana. Okay, Superflow at least not going to punish us too badly here, which is good. I think I will play the armor over here. Probably there's nothing coming for the opponent in terms of Destroy effects if they're playing Angela, but you never know. Could be a uh, Sarah deck, I suppose, theoretically. I don't know, some of them play Angela, maybe, I think. Not got an amazing play here. I think I'll just probably skip, pump up the Sunspot, 
just bide our time a little. Seem to be playing some kind of zoo deck himself, actually. Which is pretty spicy, pretty interesting. Got Ant-Man, so we probably want to play that in case we draw Ultron. I don't really want to play the Zero still, that card is not too good here. Perhaps just playing this in the middle location is fine. I don't know if we're going to be able to win this game. We've sort of missed all of our good cards. The Patriot, Kazar, Blue Marvel, Ultron. We do draw Blue Marvel now. I guess I'll play it. Playing a Blue Marvel mid. Let's see if it'll be enough. You never know. They might just play some, uh, you know, kind of crap cards. Armor isn't too good. And a Sunspot. Okay. So actually ending up playing the Rock might win us the game here. <laughs> nah, it wouldn't have mattered. So we do get the win on a, another zoo deck. The Korg seemed to brick them up, which is good. Somebody rocking the new Valentine themed avatar. Could play Ebony more here. I don't mind it because we have Strange Academy, so we just end up moving the Ebony more. Maybe let's play it not in the Strange Academy, just so that we have a bit more flexibility when it comes to where we play cards. Downside here is I cannot armor my Ebony more, which might come back to bite us. Okay, we drew Ultron. I'll play armor left. Patriot would be a great draw now, then we could curve Patriot, Kazar, Blue Marvel. And have a really nice time there. Gonna be a Zabu from the opponent. Wakanda, okay, that's nice. We won't lose our Ebony more. Invisible Woman is fine, I think. We can simply go ahead and play that again. Can't play it over here in the right because of Ebony, so playing into the Strange Academy, we're just gonna sort of see where the units go. It's not necessarily ideal. We'll probably end up playing Ultron perhaps in the middle. That would be the best for us at the end of the game. We'll go ahead and Kazar now. I might, I might throw a snap onto this as well because they don't know what I've got. So it's quite threatening and they might think they're winning against the Invisible Woman. They might have an impression of what we're playing when that is not in fact the case. Although I am playing Ebony more armor, so you'd kind of imagine it would be potentially ultra. But that's a little bit of logic required to get to that stage. Maybe a Luke Cage. That is bizarre with Zabu. Might be a Wong with the Zabu? I don't know. I'll just play my blue marble. Very straightforward. This deck's easy to play, man. You just slam the cards. Finish with Ultron, of course. Provided not everything goes mid, then we should be in great shape. We can just refill this Strange Academy at the end with a huge amount of points. Actually gonna magic now. Okay, that's a bit spooky. That's probably gonna mean Odin, I would imagine. Maybe Invisible Woman can save us, though. Oh, that's a very interesting mechanic. Strange Academy didn't move these cards. I didn't know it worked like that. That is quite wacky. Let's go ahead and play Ultron then into Invisible Woman. The Invisible Woman might save us from this, uh, from this, you know, wombo combo that they've got coming. And save is a pretty strong word, I suppose, but you know what I mean. The only downside is I've not been able to get any of my cards into Wakanda, so... That is not great for me. We'll just play out the Patriot. Probably pay, play Patriot here. I think we have a good shot of winning in the mid anyway. We get the buff from... That being said, you know what? Maybe let's go for the win in the in the right and the mid. And to do that, we can play Patriot over here. And then we can go Ant-Man mid and just zero or something like that. Yep, that should be good. Of course, every single Ultron drone is going to be buffed by four points. So a pretty considerable amount of strength coming in at the end. Oh no, did I just play zero? What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> oh my goodness me, we're actually gonna deny our own Ultron because I'm an absolute doofus. But we're gonna be fine anyway. Good heavens, what have I done? Don't do what I just did. This deck's actually kind of a challenge, you have to not zero your own units, <laughs> it turns out. Okay, we can go with armor in the cloning vats just to protect our board, I like that. You know, get double armor online, and perhaps armor in the left as well. Gonna be a goose coming in, okay, that'll not affect us too badly, as we are, of course, a zoo deck. I'm gonna snap on Jotunheim, that's really good for me. <clears throat> and we'll get a cheeky little win there. And now we have a rematch, so this time without, perhaps, the Jotunheim start. Could go zero, turn one, but um, perhaps we just want to go for the Invisible Woman line of play in this particular game. Sunspot is going to be the card that the opponent drops, turn one. And Kazar coming into the hand, that is really good. 
Zero can definitely be awkward sometimes, but I think having that payoff for Ebony Moor is just so worth it when you do manage to get that. So we'll Invisible Woman up. We, the opponent doesn't really know what we're playing other than armor plus Korg, so... Oh, Washington DC is really good for me. Could go zero plus armor here. I think I like it. In fact, we can get the armor value in Washington DC if we want. You know, we can disable its effect. I think I like that play. Get some extra points. Of course, the Ultron will kind of work in the Washington DC anyway, so this might be a bit of... I mean, we get we get the value, so it's fine. I'll play Kazar in the middle, of course. We've dodged the Juggernaut. Quite interesting cards the opponent's running here. We know they're probably... They've got a goose. Kind of hard to say exactly what they're playing. Okay, do we want to just jam the Patriot now, perhaps? We can do something like this. It's going to be tricky for the opponent to know how many points we have. Alternatively, maybe we don't even play Ant-Man in the middle location here. Kind of feeling like a play like this could be good. And then just Ultron at the end. Hoping we can win the middle here. We know they play Aero, which is a bit scary, isn't it? But I don't know that Aero really affects my Ultron too badly. Because if they move it away, my Ant-Man will still go up in strength and will win us the location. We do have a fair amount of points in the left. Let's see, maybe they play Aero and sort of lose the game as a result. I'm not going to snap though, because there is a fair chance we could lose here. They are going to Aero us. So that means we're winning right, and just an Iceman. I think we got this one in the bag. Very nice. Maybe could have gone for a snap there. The error play was quite predictable, of course, since we see it in our hand. <laughs> the opponent doesn't even know we got that card from them. Very nice. Power of Ultron. In fact, it might have just been correct to play Ultron right every time there. I'm not sure. I guess not. I guess not. Okay, my camera's blurry. Hey, cut that out. Why is it blurry? Am I too close to it? I don't know. All right, let's go for an Iceman turn one. Dark Dimension gives us essentially an invisible woman for free. The hood is troubling. That's going to mean Killmonger is a distinct possibility. Let's play Invisible Woman here on the right. That means we can make sure all of our one costs are protected. And it's going to be a mystery game this time around. So what have we got? Well, Zero isn't looking too good for us here. Oftentimes it ends up being like that. Let's play Ant-Man over here in the right. I think it's fine. You're going to go Deathlock, right? Of course, we're not actually shuffling Vibranium in, which is cool. Play Kazar over here as well. They're going to enchant us, actually. That's pretty interesting. So my cards will flip over now. And we're going to get a bunch of Vibranium. Not necessarily the end of the world. We can always just go with a cheeky sunspot here if we want to. I don't really want to play the Zero. I suppose part of me would like to uh, play these cards into the left location, actually. We've got to be very afraid of Killmonger here, right? So let's, let's do this. Yes, we give up some points on the sunspot, but I believe this will get Killmongered anyway, and we're going to play Ultron left. And uh, we just have to pray that it's going to be enough. I'm not sure it will be, but okay, they're playing another one-cost card. Interesting that Yondu can get rid of Vibranium. That's an interesting interaction, because he counts as destroying a unit for things like uh, death. But Vibranium says it can't be destroyed, so that's kind of interesting. Do you think we're winning the game here? Let's find out. No wave to be seen. I'm actually going to go ahead and snap... Ah! I can't really snap because we are revealing our cards first, so Killmonger would really hurt us. They're going to wave us into the mid, that's kind of fine, we're winning the middle. That really comes down to, is there a Killmonger or not waiting for us in the Dark Dimension? If not, we should be good. <clears throat> There's a Demon and a Vibranium. Oh, not going to be good enough for the opponent. Take a nice win there, no Killmonger to be seen. Very good stuff. Oh, we're up against Bane Juan. This is someone I've known for a long time. This is uh, Bane from Gwent. Quite a well-known community member in the staff as well. Let's go ahead and sunspot in the Asgard. I would like to get that going, of course. Invisible Woman not going to do too much in Asgard. Perhaps we want to just drop her over in the right location now. We can always go with Ebony Moore Zero if we want to just win Asgard outright. And yeah, we'll see. They are, they are shocked by my Invisible Woman, Woman play. I would be as well. Pretty outrageous. Turn three, we can just drop the uh, the big boys. I guess I will. Kind of gives the game plan away a little bit, doesn't it? If we're going to play an Ant-Man, it will have to be played here. So I think it makes sense to just play it and just say, you know what, if there's a Killmonger, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in a fair amount of trouble if there is a Killmonger. To be fair, I maybe have to respect a snap here from the opponent. They're going to go Swarm Discard with Colleen. I love that play. Of course, one of my favorites. I think we should be good to win the Asgard for now, so... 
I'm just going to play Kazar in the right. Draw some cards up. Go Blue Marvel over here, of course. Now, this is very scary, the Shuri. I don't know if we can beat Shuri necessarily. Okay, going to be just a, a MOD okay. Yeah, well, Modok as normal people say it. And the Patriot isn't really activated that well right now. We could probably just skip playing the Patriot and opt for Sunspot value instead. A little tricky to play any cards here. I'll probably just go ahead and play the armor mid, nothing else. Is it even worth playing the armor mid or do we just need plus six in the left lane and try to win there? No, they have a lot of swarms in hand. I think we're losing this game to be fair. This is probably a retreat angle without that Ultron. With Ultron, I probably would have stayed in and, and seen it to the end, but let's go ahead and retreat. Play one last game here and see what we can't do. Oh, we have Sanctum with Ultron. That is really nice for us. Ebony Moor as well is pretty chill. I could could have even played that turn one here since we're curving into Patriot. We might come to regret not doing that. Oh, then again, we might just draw the Invisible Woman. They might think they have good chances of winning here because of the Space Stone that can move one of their units into the Sanctum. So we honestly have pretty good odds of taking a snap here and having it go through. And Wakanda's also great. Not gonna have to worry about the Killmongerino. But I'm probably just gonna play on curve for now. I suppose Ebony Moore might have been a, a good choice there. But I think getting these... Oh man, this is just... This is just crazy value, isn't it? Should we play Kazar Miz? I think I'll play Blue Marvel in the right. I don't want to give away my game plan, that's the thing. I'm also worried about snapping just yet. They're gonna move She-Hulk across. Perfect for us, perfect. I'll go ahead and snap. And then we can play Blue Marvel in the right, I think. Just try to get as many Ultron bodies as possible, any as many drones. Since they are being buffed by everything, gonna be plus four on all that stuff. So we've got 12 points in the left, and the opponent is gonna have to retreat. Couldn't get some more cubes there, unfortunately. The infinite ranked players, they're just, they're just a little sneaky, aren't they? Anyway, that was some Ultron. I hope you guys enjoyed. Check out another video on the screen right now if you want some more gameplay. Uh, this deck worked very well, actually. I'm pretty damn impressed with it. Easy cube game, eh? Anyway, see you next time. Bye-bye.